Hey, Tourpreneurs, it's Mitch Bach. And just a quick note before we begin today's episode, Tourpreneur is currently sponsored by Google. We're thankful for their support of our community, and we are offering with them a completely free course helping you unlock the power and potential of Google's Things to Do program, which is specifically helping tour operators add their tours to Google in new ways that gives you new exposure and more direct bookings. To learn more, go to tourpreneur.com slash Google. And as always, show notes, more resources, links to our newsletter, our business coaching community, and so much more are available on tourpreneur.com. Now to the episode. I keep seeing operators who have great product, great experiences. On the face of it, a nice looking business but when you dig deep, when you get under the skin, these operators are not profitable businesses or barely profitable. And that to me is just not where we should be as an industry. I want to get operators running sustainable, profitable businesses, making good decisions that gives them a lifestyle that I believe that they're, they're entitled to. Welcome to the Torpreneur Podcast. Travel industry veteran Shane Whaley will take you on a journey with fellow torpreneurs, sharing their tips, ideas, insights, and success stories to inspire you to make your tour business the best it can be. And now, here is your host, Shane Whaley. Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode 179 of the Torpreneur Podcast. Today, I wish to announce some major changes here at the podcast and for our community. I'm thrilled to announce that as of June 13th, I'll be taking on a new role as head of community at Fair Harbor. Now, some of you know I worked at Booking.com for over 10 years. Personally, I never completed my degree, and I always felt that my university was Booking.com, and I always considered the company to be my alma mater. Booking developed me from being a young, commission-hungry salesman into a polished regional director managing seven offices across the U.S. and Canada, overseeing hundreds of employees. So when the call came in that Fair Harbor, a booking-owned company, were keen for me to come in as head of community, the call was just too strong for me to turn down. I'm also excited because this is the first major role in my career that does not involve sales and sales management. I've always been a salesman. So to be able to pivot into a new career in my late 40s, well, that's kind of rare at my age. So I couldn't turn this down. Also, I worked for over a decade, well over a decade with OTAs, both in hotels and in experiences. Last year, I had a brief sojourn into channel management. And now I'm get to experience the ResTech side of the business, which has always fascinated me. How ResTech can be not just the operator's plumbing, but a true partner in growing their business. Now, that obviously pre- presented me with a dilemma. Could I continue to produce Tourpreneur and deliver for my new employers and their clients? And I've thought long and hard about this over the last few weeks and recognized that not only could there be a conflict of interest, but also it's a question of productivity. Do I want to be working 15-hour days producing the same type of work? The answer is no. That wouldn't be right. It wouldn't be right to you, dear listener, community member. It wouldn't be right to Fair Harbor or right on Fair Harbor either. Uh, I pride myself. I've always prided myself on delivering the best content that I can at Tourpreneur. And I feel that hosting these two jobs would would be too much. And also, to be honest, I want to enjoy other activities in life. I don't want to be chained to the screen constantly. Now, don't worry. Um, One of my concerns was I didn't want to leave you all in the lurch. You know, over lockdown, I've received so many messages from you telling me that the podcast and our community has kept you going during some rough times. So I'm not going to just abandon you because I know how important our community is. Our tourpreneur community is one of the most engaged communities online for tour operators and travel professionals to congregate, to learn from each other, to help each other. It's not just the education we receive from the podcast, from the community, but also the support that we get from our peers. 
So, the exciting news is that I've invited three industry veterans to take over the reins here at Tourpreneur. The three veterans, which really means old buggers, are joining us today. Please welcome Mitch Batch, Peter Syme, and Chris Torres. Shane, you didn't tell us that's why we were coming on this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you know, this is a bittersweet moment for me. Uh, Torpreneur has been such a big part of my life over the last couple of years. Starting Torpreneur was a, um, a big challenge. It was a gamble. It was something that it was a big, hairy, audacious goal. I was incredibly nervous about why is, you know, my big question was, why, why is nobody else really doing this? Uh, and why is nobody really producing a podcast that speaks with tour operators on a weekly basis? And from, from the start, what surprised me without any advertising budget was how much the, opera, the industry supported and embraced the Tourpreneur project. So living with that for the last three years, honestly, for me, the big moment was arrival uh, 2019 in Orlando uh, and having a booth sponsored by our friends at Checkfront and how many people were coming up and saying, love your show, you know, you, you're really helping me, I learned so much, etc. And then I realized I was on to something. And not not just in terms of, of growing a podcast, but actually growing a podcast that made a real difference to people. Because as we all know, being a tour operator can be a very lonely job. You know, your spouse may not understand the challenges you're going through. Your fr- you know, friends don't necessarily understand. Um, and certainly during lockdown, two years of not being able to get together and network, you know, it was brutal on all of us not having a support network. So recognizing that Torpreneur was more than just a podcast, it was a very engaged community. So uh, I I am very sad um, to be leaving because it's been my baby, quite frankly, but I'm also very, very excited about the new opportunity. As I said in my opening remarks at 47, to get a stab at it, at reinventing myself in a new career, um, which has come around basically because Fair Harbor really enjoy the community. They've appreciated the podcast and they're like, we love what you're doing over there. You know, why don't you come do that for us? Which was, you know, a total surprise to me and an endorsement of the work at Tourpreneur. So definitely, uh, yeah, bittersweet. Uh, I had, had a lump in my throat, to be honest, when you were reading out that part at the start there, from, uh, Shane. So it's, I, I, I'm sure the other guys are the same. They'll speak for themselves, but you know, Tourpreneur has been a huge part of the industry, huge part of you know, my daily routine, you know, listening to the podcast every morning with a coffee and, and everything else. And you know, it's an absolute honour and a privilege to to try and take this forward and and, and keep it going uh, in your absence. So but I do wish you all the best at, at Fair Harbour. I really do. Thank you. I mean, we're all here today. We knew of each other before I started Tourpreneur. We certainly didn't know each other very well. Uh, and that's also been a huge plus for me of Tourpreneur is, is connections, forging connections and making friends, which is why we're so lucky to work in this experiences industry. You know, I, I remember Rod Cuthbert saying at one arrival event that this feels like a, a, a reunion once a year. And he did say three days is enough. Don't I? <laughs> but I think he was right. I think he hit the nail on the head that uh, uh, coming to networking events uh, whether it's Travel Massive or Arrival or, or, or Skift events, wherever they may be, it is like a reunion uh, for us all. And I'm just very grateful for the friends and the, and the connections that I've made through hosting Tourpreneur. Yeah, just like you say, congratulations, Shane. This, uh, you did point it out. Like, old-aged Welshmen like yourself don't really get getting big offers to work with big PLC companies every now and again. So you're going back to your natural home. With booking holdings, uh, just well done on that opportunity. Fantastic effort on the last three years of building up the tourpreneur business and the tourpreneur community. Obviously, we'll do whatever we can to take on what you built. I'm sure we'll have you back on the show at several times, and I'm sure we'll be arguing with several times because you're now in the the OTA side and the rest tech side of the world. And as you know, I'm 100% on the operator side, and hopefully we. That blends together most of the time, but some of the time it doesn't. So I'm sure we will have you on for some some interesting discussions. But overall, fantastic job the last three years. And we really hope you get on well with building a community at Fair Harbour. Like you said, it's a new role, new role for them as well as a new role for you. And it's, it's quite interesting to see that the big boys in the industry, and Fair Harbour is the biggest rest tech in the industry, and Book and Holdings is the biggest travel company in the industry it's interesting to see how their focus has changed to 
understanding the power of community and what community can mean for their business. Uh, and from your initiative of starting to entrepreneur, starting the community from nothing, even though there was thousands of operators all around the world, businesses of all sizes now are realizing that community is where the real heart and soul of a of a business and a community and a, and a, an industry is. And any business that doesn't really grasp that community going forward is, is going to be in trouble. I feel like there's nothing better than learning and growing together with other businesses and also to learn real, actionable, quality, trustworthy content and techniques from fellow entrepreneurs. But to create that type of trust between fellow companies takes someone like you, Shane, to lay the groundwork of generosity, of also cutting through the BS. I can't wait for us to have you on the episode, on an episode, Shane, from Fair Harbor, and then we're going to grill you. What actionable, <laughs> trustworthy content can you tell us about Fair Harbor uh, from your side of things? Because you set that precedent. And I mean, we're not even going to try to fill your shoes in any in any similar way, because we can't we can't do what you did at a time in at least my lifetime. I know Pete is three times older than me. Uh, <laughs> we've, we've never had to experience uh, as tour operators, as tour guides, as professionals in the travel industry, you showed up daily to me. Business isn't the right word because it felt like, of course, a community, but also a charity. Every day you were waking up, we were fueling you with virtual coffees that we were buying you. But otherwise, you were just going out there and showing up for our community. And that's that's incredible. But what that did for our industry was set a precedent for what a company should be doing to provide value to its customers. And I mean, we can't thank you enough because I remember going to a rival in San Diego in January and being at a cocktail mixer and seeing someone's name. And I didn't really see them. I saw their Facebook avatar as a, someone commenting in the Facebook group and we would hug. I would hug people that I've only known through Facebook comment sections. And to say that at the end of a pandemic is special because I know a lot of other Facebook groups probably don't mm. hug each other's members. Yeah. Helped help keep those all together during the pandemic or the, the UK helped hold us and cement us all together. And um, you're, you're an integrate, integrate part of that. So one thing is probably what I'm saying is like Shane's a media professional and he kind of shows a slick and we've all seen him improving that over the over the period of time he's been hosting Tourpreneur. He's the ultimate professional. And for this, if you look at the numbers, there's one of Shane and the three of us, so that maybe tells you something, that there has to be more than one just to take over from Shane because otherwise it won't be done well. So there's three of us here. But we're not media professionals. Chris is probably the closest to a media professional. I'm certainly not. Mitch is not. Uh, so the tone of the show going forward and the tone of the community going forward is probably going to be different. I would guarantee 100% different because just because of the different backgrounds of, of what we are. But the overall focus on community will be 100%. It is all about the community and it is all about the operators. And I've only got one wish. My input on this is it's very simple. If I can make operators more profitable, the community's done its job. That, that's as simple as I can say it because from my, although Mitch keeps pointing, pointing out that I'm old, I've only been doing this a few decades, not tens of decades. I keep seeing operators who have great product, great experiences on the face of it, a nice looking business. But when you dig deep, when you get under the skin, these operators are not profitable businesses or barely profitable. And that to me is just not where we should be as an industry. I, and I, I want to get operators running sustainable, profitable businesses, making good decisions that gives them a lifestyle that I believe that they're, they're entitled to. I'm, I'm thrilled to hear that. And when I thought about next steps and who could take Tourpreneur on, you know, I see myself, I appreciate your comments about media professional, but I always saw myself as a facilitator. So I was able to speak to an operator and draw out the story of their business and share their challenges, their wins and their and their failures. And with you three going forward, you all have vast experience in different aspects of actually operating a 
tour business, running a tour business, training guides, marketing, digital marketing. I mean, look as to, to book as you've writ- literally written the book, Chris. So that's what I'm excited about with this next stage is I felt I was good at facilitating. You three are going to come up with tangible stuff that that operators can go and act on in order to become profitable or more profitable and that's what i'm really excited for and how you're going to take tourpreneur to the next level and you know we're starting that with the hot seats in berlin and i know you've done some in scotland already i'm really excited to sit in a room with you in berlin and speak to operators and really dig deep on the current you know state of affairs and you know potential weaknesses as well as the strengths of that business and where they can you know improve and, and grow their profits i'm really excited about how deep you're going to dig into that so it's a whole different dimension of just how did you get started this is like okay how can we take you to profitability i think it's a unique mix of uh perspectives that the three of us have and it's going to take a village to attempt to sort of do what you did, but you're absolutely right. Pete and I have been operators for dozens of years, and uh, Chris has worked with hundreds of operators over, again, several decades. And that's given us a sort of a bird's eye view of the landscape, but also a boots on the ground kind of view uh, of what has worked for us. and, and, And also, we have a lot of opinions about this industry and I do want to make sure that your spirit of honesty, of transparency, of trust is, is, is here. We're not, we're not going to be in the pockets of anyone. We're not going to hold back. Uh, we're going to try and hopefully create uh, and improve an industry that we all work in and believe in just like you do. So we, we can't imitate you, but we can hopefully continue those, those values that you've set for us. Yeah. Everything will be operator first. It has to benefit them in the long run. And as Mitch says, we'll, we won't be held accountable to anyone else. If we feel the industry needs to, we need to say something industry to make it better. We will say it. No, we're not going to hold back in that side of things. But I think, like I say, everything needs to be done for the benefit of the operator. And I know with all the things that we're going to have planned, which we'll announce um, shortly, uh, everything is going to be focused on that one particular area. So, One thing I will say at the moment is uh, in a week's time or whenever it is, we're releasing a roadmap of where we hope to take to our to help the operators. But one thing I will say at this point is this isn't the Pete, Mitch and Chris show. This is we have to get the operators much more deeper involved yep. with Tourpreneur. The Definitely. operator, we will be asking for support from operators for operators who have got the ability or the, the time to help and go a lot deeper because the last thing any operator wants to see is my ugly head or Mitch's ugly head on the screen every, every week. So we will be reaching out to operators. Thanks for missing me out there. Yeah, what about uh, Chris's? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, Obviously, I don't have an ugly cool head. Handsome. You notice on this screen as well, if I put my glasses down, it's the four glasses show here as well. So yeah. all looks a bit weird. It's all, all very strange. So we will be getting more operators involved in the community at different levels, depending on how much time they can dedicate, the their expertise, where they feel they can help the community, because the community isn't a community if there's just three, three heads leading it. We need much more engagement for the operators. And when we re- lay out the roadmap going forward, as well as the operator being the centre focus of all things, other operators learn from other operators. Mm-hmm. This, this is going to be a learning community and an education community to make more people profitable. We don't know everything. We know a lot between us, but we don't know everything. We don't know everything in every vertical. We don't know everything about food tours, about adventure tours, about brewery tours, about history tours, cultural tours, so digital tours that are coming on the road. So we need operators to get more engaged so we can go deeper on each vertical because if we're going to make people more profitable, we have to go deep. And by going deep, it takes a lot of effort and a lot of time. Therefore, we will need support on that from the operator community. And I guess on that basic level of promises to the community, we promise that nothing's going to change in terms of the amount that we're showing up for you in terms of podcast production and Facebook group interaction and everything else that you've done, Shane. The least we can do is continue that. Mm -hmm. But again, we're not you and we, uh, we have what we hope to unveil as some fantastic new ideas and plans uh, for what your community is, um, is already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If anything, there's going to be even more content and it's going to be a lot more (laughs) coming out between the three of us. Yeah.
Excellent. Well, you know, this has been a good handover. Um, I'm handing my baby over to you. I, I trust all, all three of you uh, to take this to the next level. And I'm excited as a listener and as a consumer of the content now going forward to listen to your episodes going deep and, you know, reading your content. I'm, I'm thrilled. I, I couldn't be happier that Torpreneur is going to such nice new parents. We wish we were along for the journey as well, Shane, to be honest. No, I, 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 I wish we could all do this together, but completely understand where you're going from. It's, it's a position that's too good to to leave on the table for yourself. And you no, know, as we mentioned there, no, the May the 18th, which I think is a week today, as this episode goes out, we will be uh, making a, an announcement in terms of all the different things that we'll be producing and doing and all the ideas that we think uh, that we're going to put forward. Um, so uh, we know there are going to no doubt be lots of questions and lots of comments on this, but uh, in a week's time, we will be announcing all. So, And I've seen a sneak preview of it, listeners, and uh, you're in for a real treat. This is something very, very different, very, very unique. And what, what the team are going to do is you know that they have a proven record in the industry. These aren't empty suit guys coming in to sell you a course for $997 and then bugger off. You know, they're here for the long haul. And I'm really, really excited to see what you develop. I will say, uh, as the only American here as well, I promise that all our video recordings will be subtitled. Uh, or at least in person. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure that's the only reason you invited me is for your American <laughs> listeners to understand a third of Tour Printer moving forward. And then I, I do have to call Shane out for the fact that I was supposed to be retiring on the 31st of May <laughs> uh, coming up or semi-retiring on the 31st of May because I've sold my last tour operation uh, deals through, but I've just got some stuff to tidy up. Whereas I've not even had one day of retirement because I've got involved in this now halfway through May, so I've not even got to the retirement point. I think it was about 50 minutes of retirement, was it not, Pete? Yeah. Like yeah. I've not even had one day of retirement that I intended doing and I'm back in it. Well, you know, the beautiful thing about the Torpreneur Project is other than the, the daily brief, which which did become a chore because that was daily, it was constant, you know, this never really felt like work. When you're engaging with operators, when you're learning from operators, when you're seeing operators come out to the community and asking for questions around pricing or, or best practices with hiring, it almost doesn't feel like a job. And, and by the way, Peter, you know, you wave a check for $2 million in front of me to buy Tourpreneur, then what do yeah, you know? <laughs> no, I'm joking apart. It doesn't feel like work, and that's why I was able to sustain it for three years. But, but that's what we have to get all tourpreneurs, tour operators to. I've never went to work for decades. I've never been to work for decades because it doesn't feel like work. Yeah. I can only say that because I run profitable businesses that take away a lot of the strain of chasing the next deal or chasing the, the next thing and the, the pressure that gives on your family paying bills. So we're in the best part of the best. We're in the best industry and we're in the best part of the industry, giving people great experiences every day. A lot of the operators are under stress every day, and that's not how it should be feeling. Mm-hmm. And they should be feeling like it's not work every day as a rounded concept, not just the, the guiding of the tours that so many of them enjoy. We need to get away that financial pressure, that marketing pressure, that technology pressure, all of that stuff that they struggle with or a lot of the operators struggle with. We need to, we need to help with that and, and give everybody thinking they've never worked uh, a day in their life, but they've given millions of people lots of pleasure mm-hmm. excellent well thank you all for jumping on the call today um i know there'll be further announcements you, you're going to announce the roadmap shortly and uh yeah everyone stay tuned say subscribe subscribe Torpner really is going to the next level and I, i'm really excited to uh to hear everything that's going to happen please don't leave <laughs> no, no I, I'm, I'm still going to be in the community. And also, if anything, with, with my new role, I'm going to be on the road a lot more. So you're going to see my ugly face in person at a lot more events. So I'm definitely going to still, I'm, I'm not disappearing, uh, you know, walking off into the sunset. I'm still very much going to be part of, of our industry because I love it too much. No, Shane, you, you, you can go. I was talking to the audience. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you for everything, though, seriously. No, see you later, yeah. Kind of and enjoy Amsterdam. It's only an hour's flight from here, so I'll be popping over to see you when you're in Amsterdam. Fantastic. I look forward to it. Thanks for listening to the Torpreneur podcast. Be sure to visit torpreneur.com to join the conversation and access the show notes, including links to the resources mentioned on today's episode. This is Torpreneur.